We think differently. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Out of darkness, yes, I hope. But uh, first of all, there is darkness, as you, as you all know. And uh, a curtain of darkness is uh, upon Afghanistan since a few, since a few days, since a few months, actually, since February 2020, and this infamous agreement of Doha between uh, America and the Taliban, which was one of the most unexpected. Uh, diplomatic act and most scandalous which I ever saw in my life. Why did the American administration decide to deal with Taliban's who were not in charge, who were not on the rising wave, who were not at the government, without putting in the deal the government, this will remain for me for most of us an enigma and a great mistake and a great moral fault on America, which I love so much as for myself. So first of all, darkness. And darkness of this Taliban regime, about which uh, I read and I hear here or there academic questions. Did they change? Are they the same? And so on. The reality which we have to stress, on my opinion, at the beginning of this conference, is that they did not change. At least on the big picture, on the big points, if you really look carefully, not only at what they say, but if you look at what they actually do, if you look at what happened in the weeks preceding the fall of Kabul, if you look at what they actually did in the villages and the city which they took over in the last weeks before the fall of Kabul, they acted exactly as 25 years ago. Murders, execution, uh, Kasha Svan, uh, the singer Andarabi, uh, so many summary executions of suspects or opponents. It was exactly the same. And I'm so surprised to see commentators speculating about what the Taliban could do in the near future when they have under their eyes what they actually did in the last weeks. And you have some reports of Amnesty International and you have a um, presentation text of the last report by Agnès Calamar, which presents, which offers no doubt on the fact that at this moment the Taliban act exactly as they did 25 years ago. So the international community, the American administration, decided to offer on a silver plate the great Afghanistan, a state, a base to an Islamist, obscurantist, and fascist and illegal and blacklisted organization. This is really darkness. And about the links with uh, terrorism, with Al-Qaeda, with Daesh, again, what an absurdity and what a blindness. All the honest observers of the situation in Afghanistan know 
that the network, the links, links by through ideas, links through personal relationship, links through family, links through belief, are so tight that you cannot, of course, say that there is on one side Taliban and on the other side Al-Qaeda or even Daesh. And the fact that there is fights here or there, there is always facts in family affairs. It does not mean that it is two ideologies with an iron wall between the two. So first of all, darkness and so many murders and criminal acts which we have to grieve, starting with one great guy whom I personally met in 2002 and who was brutally murdered a few hours ago, a few days ago, Fahim Dashti. And I would like to put this, at least my little intervention in this conference, under the, memory, the umbrella, the memory, and the authority of Fahim Dashti, who was not a fighter. He was a journalist. He was uh, one of the consciousness of Afghanistan. He was a great gentleman, a sweet man. He survived the, as, the bomb killing Ahmed Shamasud 20 years ago. And just 20 years after day for day, he did not survive a drone sent by Pakistani secret services. So all of that is real, ladies and gentlemen, really darkness. So out of darkness, what? Thanks God, there are some, some signs and some sources of hope in this night which has fallen on Kabul and on Afghanistan and it is to celebrate these lights and these sparks of light that we meet today. First of all, there is the fact that contrary to what I read everywhere, the 20 last years, the two last decades of alliance between the Afghan people and um, some Democrats outside worked. It worked. I'm so furious to hear everywhere that this quote, endless war, costed a lot to America and was worth nothing and did not work. No, it did work. A civil society was taking birth. A free press was developing. I was in Afghanistan a few months ago. And I was in Afghanistan a few years ago, few, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago. In 1920, at the end of, of 2001, I was special envoy for a few months of President Chirac in order to study what France could do to help Afghanistan to rebuild itself 20 years ago. I was in Kabul, I was in Mazari Sharif, I was in Erat, in Kanda, and so on. And I brought back a report which was published in France and which has just been released in America by my friend General Petreus at the Middle East Institute. You can find it online. I saw Afghanistan 20 years ago. And I saw a Afghanistan a few months ago. It's night and day. The process was on. It worked. And Afghanistan was achieving 
this difficult process of mixing, combining an old, noble, ancient tradition and the universal principles of democracy. The Afghan culture and the rights of women, the uh, elementary freedoms, this combination was working. And I could not, I could not imagine such a contrast than the difference between, for example, the life of the women when I was there for Chirac 20 years ago and the face of the Afghan women a few months ago when I was back. So this is a source, a source of hope. Taliban did not change, but Afghanistan did change. And even if the Taliban achieved their coup, their putsch, because of violence, because of betrayal of, their, of the allies of Afghanistan people, and because of Pakistan, of course they achieved the coup. But a coup is just a coup when you have underneath a vivid, vibrant, and well alive civil society, which is a fact. In Afghanistan, I can, you know that some of you better than me, for those who were not in Afghanistan recently, I bear witness for that. I, am, I bear testimony of this change. The second source of hope is, of course, this incredible, unexpected for me, in spite of what I just said, incredible and so brave movement of resistance of women that just started on the very day of the coup of Taliban. The very day when they took Kabul, some women, few, but more and more numerous as time goes by, went down in the streets and decided, taking all the risks, to protest and to show their beautiful and noble face. And this these women taking this risk, deciding to, to, to oppose the stupid, brutal, barbarian Taliban is something incredible and a great source of hope. And last but not least, there is for me another source, source of hope, which is Ahmad Massoud. I met Ahmad Massoud exactly one year ago, on September 11, 2020. I met him for the first time in Panjshir. And I was with my friend, Commander Muslim Ayat. He was there. And Ahmad Massoud organized a meeting of commanders. The old commanders of Ahmad Shah Massoud, his father, and his young commanders. And I was impressed, first of all, by his sense of inner heritage, his devotion to his father, his genuine will to continue the path of his father and mentor. It was such an incredible and beautiful history of transmission. And I remember in front of these hundreds of commanders and fighters, we exchanged, Ahmad and myself, some short speeches, and I finished mine by saying there was a great lion of Panjshir whom we are grieving now, we are 
mourning this great lion of Panchi who was dead 20, uh, 19 years ago. But thanks God, there is a new lion of Panchi. There is a young lion of Panchi which I had at my side and who was Ahmad Masood. And for me, it was not just words. It was an evidence that this young man who could be my son was a real lion. Then a lion can be, can lose a battle. A lion can be uh, in a cage for a minute, for a moment. He remains a lion. And for me, Ahmad Masood, with his little military experience, in spite of his young age, did two incredible acts in the last weeks. Acts which are, um, which mark history of a people and maybe of the world. Number one, he decided to resist. He decided to use Panjshir as a stronghold and as a base for a new Afghanistan. First act of resistance. When all the world was accepting the Taliban rule, when all the powerful allies of Afghanistan decided to compromise, this young man who loves nothing more than looking at stars and planting flowers and gardens decided that he will be the, the one and only who would say no to this iron rule. And then he did another thing, as you know, which will take place, I believe that from the bottom of my heart in the books of history. Yesterday, when Panjshir was beaten, not by the Taliban, but by Taliban plus Pakistan, when Panjshir was provisionally and apparently beaten by Pakistanis special forces, Pakistanis drones, Pakistanis helicopters, Ahmad Masood launched an appeal in a way from nowhere, but an appeal to resistance. And when he did that, I thought of my in my national history of a great man, General de Gaulle, who had nobody with him, which had the most tiny troops possible, who was not even in France, he was in London, and he launched an appeal to resistance. Avant Bassoud, since yesterday, might be, some, in a way, an Afghan de Gaulle, and this, for me, is the main source of light out of the darkness where we are. To imagine some, um, some secret conspiracies behind all that is happening today. What we see is already so grave, is already so terrible, we don't even need to imagine some uh, backstage deals. There is a deal between America and Taliban. There is a deal between America and terrorist groups. There has been the decision to put into power, to install in the area uh, a, an Islamic state, a caliphate. The caliphate which we, which the West, with the Kurds, defeated in Mosul and in Raqqa, there was, there is a decision today to rebuild it. The same. What is built, in the process of being built in Kabul, is exactly, exactly what we debuilt, what we undid in Raqqa and in Mosul. So this is a huge scandal. This is the deep mystery of our time. 
And what we have to do here, the few we are, and some here have big voices, we have to repeat on and on, as loud as possible to international community, that this is not fair, that this is not regular, that this is a coup d'etat, this is a putsch, that the power in Kabul today is illegitimate, that it has been imposed by um, uh, no respect of any international laws, and that we should absolutely refuse to admit this state of affairs. This is what we have to repeat on and on. Premièrement, ne pas reconnaître ou reconnaître comme illégitime le régime taliban. Deuxièmement, euh, soutenir le Panjshir par tous les moyens militaires, par tous les moyens, par tous les moyens de la politique et par conséquent, comme vous savez, la. la une des modalités de la politique, c'est la logistique et c'est le militaire. Donc il faut en effet soutenir par tous les moyens de la politique la résistance du Panché. Vous avez là des hommes qui se battent pour la démocratie, qui se battent pour les droits de l'homme, qui se battent pour empêcher que naisse un califat islamique en Afghanistan, qui sont par conséquent notre l'un de nos remparts et l'un de nos boucliers à nous en Occident, dont le terrorisme. Il faudrait les abandonner. Il faudrait euh, ajouter la trahison à la trahison et la honte à la honte. Non, je crois qu'il faut l'exclusion. Moi, je il me semble que le devoir d'une démocratie aujourd'hui est d'entendre cet appel si courageux qu'a lancé le jeune Ahmad Massoud, l'appel à ne pas se résigner, l'appel à tous les républicains d'Afghanistan à le rejoindre, l'appel à tous ceux qui se reconnaissent dans l'islam des Lumières euh, à, à ne pas céder à l'obscurantisme du taliban, cet homme-là qui a lancé cet appel-là, la moindre des choses c'est de le soulever. Bien sûr que j'ai peur d'une guerre civile. Et, et l'Afghanistan a payé si cher, bien sûr, les, 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 les guerres entre Afghans. Naturellement, c'est une, pers une perspective qui me terrifie et j'ai connu l'Afghanistan sous la, sous la guerre. Mais est-ce qu'il faut... Je, je me refuse ce, ce chant, à, à accepter, je refuse d'accepter ce chantage. We think differently. 